Hello and good morning. This is Amanda, your art teacher, and I'm here in my room. And today I'm going to be discussing the the Nord Art Open Call for Artists for Nord Art 2023. I have Tuxie here, and I'm going to move this closer. Hello, Ashke Yande. Thank you very much. Okay, so where are my dry erase markers? Okay. I will tell you about this in a minute. Okay. The Nord Art Art Competition and Show. The deadline for this is October 31st. This year. Okay. Why would I have you do this if you are an artist? Because it is free to enter. That's awesome. You should um, apply for as many free art competitions as you can, because why not? Ashke Yande, I am a teacher of arts. I am. That is what I like to do. I know a lot about it. I'm still learning a lot about it. And I like to share my joy with the world because I know how to explain things in a way that uh, I think is easy enough for even children to understand. And that's why I started this channel, because my whole life, people have watched me draw, and they always would, they would always say, oh, I wish I could do that. And I'm like, I could teach you. And they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, yeah, it's easy. You're, you're overthinking it. You just need a little bit of technical skill and some practice and uh, knowledge of supplies. That's it. So this art show, once you apply... Um, the art show goes from June 8th to October, no, June 3rd, to October 8th, 2023. Okay, and now I'm gonna read to you what this is about, the history behind it. So, Kunstwerk Karl Schutt is a nonprofit cultural initiative and has been organizing the international Nord art since 1999. Nord art is one of the largest contemporary art exhibitions in Europe which is conceived anew every year. Between June and October, paintings and sculptures, photographs and installations by more than 200 selected artists, interna internationally renowned as well as newcomers, from all over the world come together as a monumental piece of art. Each work stands for itself and at the same time in a dialogue with the others. In in synergy with the imposing backdrop, a unique atmosphere develops, inviting you on a journey of discovery. It sounds so fun. The exhibition thrives on the different perspectives of individual cultures, but also makes it clear that East and West, South and North have many common thoughts. 
In order to allow deeper insights, NordArt dedicates an individual pavilion to a different country every year and also presents special projects cooperating with embassies, cultural institutions, and curators from various, I don't know, I guess countries. I don't know why I printed it um, this way, so I'm missing a line there. Um, Monday, 12.09.22. I, I don't know what that says because I printed it the wrong way. Something in impression of the exhibition grounds on the YouTube Nord Art channel. You can find films about Nord Art and its artists. So this is um, they they uh, they do this every year. So um, if you don't know, if you look about, if you look on this YouTube art channel, and you see kind of what the people are doing, that'll help you get ideas. And if you aren't ready to enter this year, they do this every year. So you'll have a year to come up with uh, different ideas for next year. And um, so like with the, um, like I was mentioning with the Aesthetica Award, um, what they're looking for is not really what I prefer to do, but that doesn't mean I'm not open to it. Um, it would be uh, awesome to experiment and it would probably probably be like another um, uh, UNLV college art assignment where you know you get challenged to do these different things and uh, they make you grow and they make you think so I will keep reading application for participation Artists from all over the world can apply to take part in the exhibition. The application for participation at NordArt is preferably online. Alternatively, applications can be submitted by post or by email. The deadline for applications is October 31st, 2022. Ashke, uh, I don't know how to create shorts yet at this point. Maybe later. There are no application or participa participation fees. The selection of artworks takes place until mid-February 2023 by a jury. A list of selected artists and special projects will be published on our website by the beginning of March 2023. So it, it takes some time for them to go through all these applications. All invited artists will be informed and asked to confirm their participation and to send the documents for the catalog. The delivery of selected artworks is scheduled, scheduled for the end of April. Please note that for organizational reasons, it is not possible to send a separate notification to non-selected applicants. Okay, and then we have the online application. I'm gonna put the links to this in the comments and I will also put it yeah I will not forget to do that okay um, the online application, fill out the fields with, I printed this out just to show you, super cool, and it's super easy, it's super easy to do. So you would just go to the website that I will put down below, and you just put in like your, you know, basic stuff, like your name, 
zip code, um, year of birth, email address, um, an artist resume, which is just like a resume for any other job that you list your awards, experience, participation in events like stuff like this, um, additional material, and then you select the field, like painting, sculpture, do do do. Multiple selection possible. So something else that I found out is really cool about this is you can submit a maximum of 10 artworks that could possibly be shown. So that's really cool because then they get to see, you know, more of your, your, what you can do. Um, I mean, submitting 10 artworks for a free competition is so cool. And I have 10 solid pieces that I could show now that I've been working and I will still keep working. That's just so cool to me. Um, label your images with title, year of origin, technique, and size. Postal address is here um, in the website, so I will I will definitely be linking that. Here's the email. I'll just type the email out here. There's a glare. Okay, let's start here. No tea. Comes to work. Okay, so something else that is so cool about this, this is just like so cool, I'm so excited. Selection of artists. How am I doing on battery? How am I always doing on battery? Not good enough. Artists will be selected by a jury by mid-February 2023. The jury is made up of curators, artists, an art historian, and the supervisory board. All invited artists will be informed by email or post and asked to confirm their participation and send the documents for the catalog. A list of the invited artists will be published on our website in early March 2023. I think I already read this. Okay, 
the Public Choice Award. I guess it's part of this. Nord Art visitors have the opportunity to vote for their favorites. The three Public Choice Awards are endowed with 1,000 euros each and come with an invitation to participate at Nord Art the following year. Artist in residence. Okay, this is like one of the another one of the coolest things about this whole thing. You might be able to go to Germany and do art and participate in Germany. Oh. Okay, in the part in the period from mid-April to the end of May, about 10 international artists will be invited to set up or create their large-scale works on site for the current Nord art. Residence time on site depends on the respective project and can, and can last from a few days to four weeks. The participants are provided with materials, a workplace, and accommodation at the Norda art site. The resulting artworks remain in the property of the artist and will be exhibited at Nordart by arrangement for longer than a year. If you wish to participate, please mark the artist in residence in the application form. Okay, I don't know where that is, but I'll find it. For this application, we require a project description. So this is a separate project that you that you'll be doing there, like in Germany. Like, I guess you send like this, a proposal and you go, you go do it there. A large scale painting or sculpture or installation. I would love to do some big sculptures and big giant paintings. Oh, I need to update my passport. Okay, so yeah, for this application, we require a project description with details on the materials and dimensions, estimated time required, and photos with examples of artworks or sketches. So an art proposal, basically. Can you read that? No, not at all. Okay. Possibly, possibly go to Germany. I would go and I would never come back to this country. I would go and I would live in Europe for the rest of my life, probably. Anything can happen, right? Anything can happen that you put your mind to doing. I know, I could see the castles and the snow. Yeah, okay. So, and the application seems simple, straightforward, it's free. Uh, I don't know why anyone would not want to do this. Yeah, and have all the land and have a moat have a moat, eat German food, Oktoberfest. Oh yes. Yeah, so, and if you can't, if you don't have 10, 10 works uh, this year, start now uh, in preparation for next year. I know that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna keep looking at these, um, these different competitions and I'm going to see what they want and I'm going to see uh, how I can make it happen. Um, I need to get out of the box of doing what I photograph, even though I do love to do it. It's like mind puzzles. Um, boats.
them on a boat. Boats. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that. I'm going to leave this up here when I'm done with the video. And now I'm going to show you a new artist that I found at the West Charleston Library. I'm going to type um, some links to his website. Wait, it's the same guy. I don't think that's the same guy. His name is Jeff Corwin. And yeah, this, this is him. And I'll link his information below as well. So Jeff Corwin, Landscapes of the American West. Uh, this is on display at the West Charleston Library until September 25th. And this is his artist statement. And I have an artist statement that, I, um, that I've written. Um, every artist will have to write an artist statement uh, whenever they apply for galleries or showings. And he says, I think there's an assumption that a photographer begins their artistic work first, and then if they're is a commercial career, it comes afterward. With me, it was completely the opposite. I shot for 25 plus years in advertising, developing a way of seeing that worked for my clients and made me happy at the same time. It wasn't until 15 years ago that I started photographing landscapes in the eastern part of Washington state. Even this interest came about because of an assignment for a bank that took me from Seattle to Walla Walla. It was then that I fell in love with that part of the world. The majority of eastern Washington is sparse, in direct contrast to the lushness of the western region, which, while beautiful, never interested me photographically. The channeled scab land was created during the last ice age. A one-half mile high dam of ice that failed over and over until ice and water raced through eastern Washington, stripping away soil and rock, carving the current landscape that I love to photograph so much. Since late 2017, I have been living in Bozeman, Montana, and in 2020, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Beginning in 2019, I began the experiment of working in color. I'm finding that there, I'm finding there are some similarities but many differences as well. And this is fine as I've always defined my job as problem solving. I'm ready for the challenge. The problem in this particular case was the issue of not liking my color landscapes. So I began to search for a solution of how to create a look that was illustrative of the landscape instead of a literal representation of it. I want people to look at them, hesitate a moment and ask questions. And this is pretty cool. Um, I just mentioned that I also see um, drawing from stuff that I photograph as problem solving. And I'm also trying to get away from having doing from photograph references. I don't want that to be a literal representation of it. I want it to be I don't have the word for it. So yeah, um, artists are cool people. And let's see. Start here. This is a photograph. And he also added nice frames to his work. And I really like this one. Let's see if I can zoom in and read the title. It's called Trail Creek, Montana. 
I've never been to Montana. And you can see that there's like a tint, like there's a little bit of color, but it's not like, it's not like just a regular color photograph. And there's me, you can see me in the, the reflection. And then, is this, this tiny one? I should do this on an iPad. This is called Norris Road, Montana. I think that angle shows the colors. See, it's just like a little bit of color. It's not like full color. And it's really, they're really awesome how like, you see how the color of the print is like against the paper. It kind of looks like pastel to me. How it's done. I don't know how he did that, but I don't know much about photography. And we have some trees and some reflections. And I really like this one. This one's called Rygate, Montana. And this photo is on his website I just saw. It's so pretty, right? I love that one. And then we have some two. These are not quite black and white. Um, one is of Melville, Montana, and one is of Bozeman, Montana. I can see, like, some gray in there. You can see my reflection. Excuse me. And then this one has a really nice frame. I don't know how he did that. It's really pretty. Oh, oh, oh. Like a nice winter scene. With a little bit of blue in there. This one's called Zoom. Livingston, Montana. And here we have some snow, some hill, hilly mountains. And then there's like a little frozen tiny pond in the middle. Some clouds. I really like that one too. This one is awesome because of the uh, horizontal and vertical lines. I really... I really like this. And like you see the open sky. The, there doesn't have to be anything in the sky. It's just, you know, you contemplate the void. That's what it's called. Um, because uh, nothing is still something. Very cool. Uh, this one I really love. Um, wait, wait. I have to burp. I'm so sorry. Uh, Untitled Landscape 3. This looks like a sea urchin in the middle of the desert. I love it. Look at the lighting contrast he got. That's amazing. How do you do that? Photography is a whole undiscovered world to me. And these clouds, look at these clouds. The contrast of dark and light is just so good in that. It's just so good. Here's another one where the lighting is really good. Um, I don't know how he did that. Did he use a light? I'll have to email him and see. Untitled landscape number two. So look at the, look at the light on the tree and the, the, how the light catches the details on the grass and the leaves and stuff. And then the, the contrast between the top and the bottom half, light and dark. I like, I like a lot of contrast. As you know, I won't shut up about it. I'll never shut up about it. Okay. This one is called Fence Line, Bozeman, Montana. And it's just really simple. It's just a fence and some snow and me and I think those are footprints 
I like that one. And there's more. I, I didn't photograph every piece. Um, just my favorites. Um, Belgrade, Montana and Untitled Landscape 4. These have nice golden colors to them. And that's that. That's what I saw. And so it's just really cool seeing what people do and how they do it. Or well, I don't know really how he does it, but wondering how he does it. Um, getting those results that make it look like pastel, but it's somehow the ink on the paper. I don't know. Um, I hope you will join me for this Nord Art competition. I'm probably going to be working on my application later today. Um, I will maybe make a video of how to make an artist statement, how to make an artist resume or an artist CV. It's not, it's not hard. Um, and I hope you have a good day. I'm going to go play in the garden for a few hours and maybe go dog sick. And uh, I hope you have a good day. Um, eat healthy, high vibrational foods. Not too much fried food, not too much sugar. All right, bye.